Hello my dear students, welcome to Baiju's exam prep. Hope you guys are fine. So guys, in today's session in the Ground Zero series, we'll be talking regarding irrigation engineering and in irrigation engineering, we'll be talking regarding types of soil water. This is an important part because whenever you will be solving numericals, it's very much important to understand the concept behind it because these small concepts are asked in many of your examinations. It can be asked in the tick mark of the questions, tick mark the correct statements or in MSQ questions that is multiple select questions. So let's start from the basic. What are the types of soil water? Now, before we start, let's be quick and let me let me tell you a few of the things before we proceed. You can know about me if you haven't known about me. And then let me tell you before we proceed that in GATE 2023, our success saga continues. We have a number of results ranking under AIR 50, under AIR 10, under AIR 100. Okay, so let's be quick. Further, you can join my telegram group for upcoming classes or upcoming schedules in the YouTube, each and everything for the notes as well. Next, coming further, if you want to download the book, link is in the description. You can download the gate preparation ebook. Next, coming further, now we'll be talking about the types of soil water. Now, before talking about types of soil water, let us know what is soil water. So when you talk about soil water, it is that water which is present in the soil solution. So ma'am, are there different types of water or do we have only one type of water? So actually we have three different categorization of water. Like first category we call it as, we have here gravitational water. You have gravitational water. Then you have capillary water and you have hygroscopic water. Actually, there are like other forms chemically combined water and all, but generally, actually you are talking about, so generally we study three only. Okay, so there are other categories if you see it in different books. But broader sense, which everyone says it is based on the research analysis and all. So if we don't, predominantly there are three types of water. Soil, water, that is gravitational water, capillary water and hygroscopic water. Now when you talk about gravitational water or when you talk about what is this gravitational, let's move aside and first talk about it. So when I say gravitational water, when I say gravitational water, what happens here? Water moves under the action of its own weight. You can see it here, here, that here what is happening, you have provided an inclination and water is moving under its own weight. I'm just telling about gravitational water. I'm not talking about the water which is present in the soil. Just if I'm telling you. Now you can see other diagrams also that water is flowing under the action of its own weight. Similarly here. But these are the ones which you say that uh, it's like an open channel flow. Water is moving under its own weight. What about which is happening inside the soil? So what happens here? When you talk about gravitational water, it is a free water. You can call it as groundwater. You can call it as gravity water. You can call it as free water. You can call it by any name. Okay. So here what happens? Here what happens? Here this water flows freely in the soil particles. Okay. Due to the force of gravity. But obvious. Now what happens if you say that ma'am, is this water used by plants? No. Plants rarely use this water. This water eventually joins the groundwater table and whenever you construct tube wells or boreholes, there you will see this gravity water. But plants rarely use this. Clear? So this was the flow which I was telling you under the action of gravity. Now one more doubt which you guys can have, ma'am, how does this gravity water reaches into the groundwater table? So what happens whenever rainfall occurs or whenever you provide water, certain amount of water flows directly through the soil under the action of gravity, which you can see it here. Okay. So the water flows inside the soil through the action of gravity because of it. Firstly, how does it flow through the soil? Because we know in soil, solids are there and voids are there. So, because of the presence of interconnecting voids, water 
flows into the soil by the action of gravity that is water moves under the action of its own weight this water will not be used join to the ground water table and eventually when you will construct few well bore holes you can extract this water but plants will not be using it from then which water plants will be using it they'll be using capillary water now what do you talk about capillary water basically this is that water which is present in the macroscopic or basically the microscopic pores of the soil it is that water where that composes the soil solution this is the water which is used by the plants so when you talk about so in capillary water capillary water will be taken up by the roots which will be provided to the leaves while they will be preparing their food so that we can get the full yield of the crop now coming the next question how is this capillary water used by the roots how are they capable of how are they capable of extracting this capillary water from the roots so let me tell you few things there are surface tension properties like cohesion that is force of attraction between similar type of molecules that is soil and soil molecules and adhesion force of attraction between different types of molecules that is soil and water so there are two types of forces which will be taking place that is soil and soil particle and soil and water particles so these surface tension properties like adhesion and cohesion are responsible for capillary water which is held in the micro pores of the soil now these forces are stronger than gravitational pull clear so this is the water which is the main source capillary water is the main source for plants okay so that is the thing you should know but coming up to the next coming up to the next the next thing which comes into action is that ma'am is this the water which is held into the soil yes the soil water which you talk about it is because of the water retention property because when you put water into the soil as you can see some amount of water will drain out under the action of gravity while some amount of water will be retained soil can hold a considerable amount of water but if the amount of water which is withhold is present in excess then it will lead to rotting of the crops so that also you have to be very very careful of now coming up next to the next one that is the hygroscopic water when you talk about hygroscopic water it's because of no use we can say why it is of no use because when you talk about hygroscopic soil water generally we say hygroscopic water hygroscopic water but if you know the actual pronunciation of it it is hygroscopic soil water this is present in the soil and this is basically a very thin film of water that is surrounding the soil particles which you can see it here this is a thin film i'll take another color this this is a thin film that surrounds the soil particles so you can see it here brown color is the soil particles and there is a very thin film that surrounds it now what happens it is not at all available to the plants at any cost why because there are very strong adhesive forces okay because of this this water is tightly it this water is tightly attached to what this water is tightly attached to the soil particles okay due to which roots of plants cannot absorb it here yeah? so that is the re reason this water is not at all available to the plants which is responsible for the crop okay because of the strong it is the force is a thin film of water is there which is attached to the soil particles so plants cannot absorb it and uh, that's it so these are the three types of vertical you can see gravitational water here so this water drains out out of the root zone so it will go eventually into the ground water table capillary water surface tension is there okay generally people say it's either cohesion or adhesion but let me tell you one property can be predominant over other but when you talk about surface tension here surface tension will comprise of both cohesion as well as adhesion which is responsible for this capillary water and capillary water is the main source of water for plants this is the question which you know, should know okay so this is the reason and let me tell you one more thing if the soil dry dries up okay and let us suppose if the soil is getting dry the pore size of the soil will increase okay and the capillary water will experience more gravitational force okay so because of it it is the result of conversion of capillary soil water into gravitational soil water in that case only because this has also been asked while other things remain to be the 
thing okay so that's all for today guys basically you should know what are these three types of water one is held uh, by the surface tension forces that is capillary water one of the water which drains freely under the action of gravity that is gravitational water one of the water that is hygroscopic water is tightly withhold in the soil particles due to the strong adhesive forces but remember water retention properties of soil should not be like they should hold it a large amount of water because it will also lead to the rotting of the plant roots okay so let me tell you before we end scholarship test you can link uh, is in the description and the upcoming classes like we'll be having sprinkler irrigation i'll be telling you because this year question from sprinkler irrigation in esc has been asked so you should know about sprinkler irrigation and you should know about drip irrigation so we'll deal that in this uh, we'll deal that in detail and we'll be having numericals of irrigation engineering as well so that's all for today guys take care of yourself bye bye and study hard